I just realized how ridiculous I look carrying a mouse, you know, up here. I feel like uh, uh, Homer's dad talking about the onion from his belt. Um, so uh, I had the good luck to go to the American Telemedicine Association show in Las Vegas yesterday, or Monday, whatever day yesterday was. And, um, you know, he said, go, have fun, go look at some stuff. And I was like, all right. Um, and, and I didn't really know what to expect. Um, I expected more blood, um, but they didn't really have a lot of that. Um, so they did have a lot of things that I recognized, though. Remember the old, you know, sh commercial? You know, I've fallen and I can't get up. Well, this is the advanced version with GPS and a cell phone. Uh, you wear that all the time. If you fall down, you hit the button, and someone will come pick you up or take you to a hospital. Uh, and then they came up with this little thing here. This calls in. 14 hours, 6 minutes since your last dose. Been 4 pills. And you're not supposed to take it with alcohol. So, um, and then when, when you take your pill, it calls your doctor and tells you you've done it. Um, so what they've done is they've taken a lot of common diagnostic tools and they've, they've mechanized them, they've made them work with the web, they've created tie-ins to patient health systems, and, and everyone's trying to sell these things at this conference, right? Which is fine and cool, and, and they all had really freaky stuff. There was a lot of Skyping going on, for, for, for lack of a better term. Uh, this is a remote control rig for a robot that you'll see in a few slides. Um, you know, basically, how can doctors work with people who are very, very far away and yet have remarkable bandwidth? Um, and then <laughs> uh, there's also, uh, what you don't realize is a lot of drugs today are, are better for you, less poisonous, if they give you the exact right amount of the dose. And they know that by, by, by what you weigh and what your blood pressure is, what your, your blood gases are like, and so they can look at that remotely now. Um, and then we have stethoscopes. So this was used actually in the space shuttle, and, and you, can, you can basically put one end against you, and then the other end can be connected via the network or, or via serial lines, via Bluetooth, and, and you can find out how someone's heart sounds, which is pretty cool too. Uh, this is a Bluetooth uh, pulse and blood oximeter. So you could conceivably run that through your phone and say things to people. You'll notice that my mouse has a blood pressure cuff. That's why I'm bringing it up here. Um, these are really wicked cool. So you can wear these 24 hours a day, and if you have an event with your heart, you hit the button, and it takes the last 30 seconds of your electrocardiogram and sends it off to your doctor. Uh, and you can just hold those, actually. That one on the right, you don't even need the leads. Oh, and the military was there, and they like big fucking trucks. Um, <laughs> so, so they had like all these trucks and RVs, like portable mammograms, portable surgical centers, and this thing was just enormous. It barely fit in the conference room, and I really want one. Um, so I'm gonna try to figure out how to make Google buy me one. And then uh, they all communicate via all these different ways. It's funny, hospitals are remarkably hostile environments to, to RF, right? So you actually don't see it much in the way of 8211, but you saw a lot of proprietary Wi-Fi systems, Bluetooth, uh, it would use the regular phone system, and then there was crazy shit that no one's ever gonna buy. Um, this guy kind of freaks me out right here. Um, what you're not seeing there is the really cool eyeball, though. You can actually look into someone's pupil using a webcam with this thing. Um, which is kind of handy, but I don't think they're going to make any money from that. This was the coolest thing I saw, though. There was this guy from China there, and uh, he had a bunch of these really crazy machines. You hold that in your hand, and while you're watching, you can see your electrocardiogram being drawn for you. And it's not FDA-approved or anything yet. They're still trying to get it sold in the United States, but it was so flippin' cool. Uh, the other thing I wanted to show you was uh, a lot of people say, wow, we can do surgery you know, robotically, and that's awesome. And it's like, well, it's awesome, but it uses up an OR. It's extremely expensive. It's no better in, in, in a bunch of cases. It's really good, though, for vein harvesting and for fixing your penis. Um, <laughs> this is a video of the vein harvesting, not the penis. Um, and what's happening here is they cut a very small hole in your leg. They, they, they run this little lead all the way down your leg, burning off the side blood vessels. They grab a hold of the vein. They pull the whole thing out all at once, and then they install it in your heart and replace all of your, your blocked arteries, veins, whatever, in your bypass. So if you've ever had a bypass before 2000, you had a scar that went from here to here, and now they can just make a little teeny scar, right? And this is a really nice use of this technology. Now, this would be very hard to do remotely because you really don't want network lag, you know? <laughs> Uh, and actually, that's actually a real problem because a lot of people want to do these things like from Nevada for people in Montana or something or wherever people live in Montana. So the military lo loves this kind of stuff because a lot of people die in the military. And so if they can bring medical technology to these people, that's a really good thing. Um, and, and the thing is, a lot of people think that hospitals and, and this kind of technology is really wrapped up. 
and, and, and it's really all connected. It's all incredibly disparate, right? Maybe they share common connections at the hospital level, but it's very rare. So there's a lot of room for innovation here, and everyone's trying to be the big solution. Oh, I want to do your patient health care, but the, the future is really awesome, you know? And there's a lot of telemetry things that are coming on so you can detect what's going on with people's bodies, you know, when they're in trouble, and it's pretty cool. So, um, did I already have that slide? Anyway, um, but yeah, like, it's all very rudimentary. Like, there's FTP being flung around. I mean, it's, it's, like, it's like 1994 for a lot of these systems. And, and they, they programmed into something called MUMPS. Um, and then it was ported to Java, and they called it Jumps, and it's just awful. It's like COBOL, but worse. So thank you. <laughs>